Hello and welcome to the Galeblade News. A lack of translated coronavirus guidance is jeopardising the safety of non-English speakers in the UK, a joint letter to the Health Secretary claims. The government said it has translated public health information into 25 languages, reaching a wide audience. But campaigners say it is a limited range of languages and translations can take weeks to be updated when advice or rules change. One charity said the government has so far shown no engagement on the issue. More than 4 million people in England and Wales do not consider English to be their main language, including more than 860,000 people who speak little or no English, according to the most recent official figures. In the UK, 88 languages other than English are spoken as a main language. A government spokesperson said it wouldn't be feasible to provide translations of all of these languages, but that it translated some of its key messages around coronavirus into the most common languages spoken in the UK. But translations have become outdated as guidance has been updated. For example, in March, the government provided guidance on social distancing in 11 languages, including Welsh, Urdu, Arabic and Bengali. But this advice was withdrawn on the 1st of May as guidance changed, and the current social distancing guide for England, which is titled Staying Alert and Safe, has not been translated by the government. Other current guidance that has not been translated by the government includes information on the NHS Test and Trace programme, and the rules on wearing face coverings. The government said it was committed to ensuring people across the UK um, receive in the information they need to stay safe during the pandemic and have made the coronavirus messages accessible to a wider audience. Some 30 local authorities, groups of public health leaders and charities have written to Health Secretary Matt Hancock and Community Secretary Robert Jenrick urging the government to produce and continue to update information in more languages. Doctors of the World, which coordinated the letter, runs clinics in London that provide medical care and information for excluded people, such as non-English speaking migrants, asylum seekers, sex workers, homeless people, and those with low literacy levels. The charity said it has translated coronavirus guidance into documents, audio guides, and videos in more than 60 languages because the government has completely forgotten and left out this patient group, who are therefore at increased risk of catching the virus and are unable to protect themselves and their families. Doctors of the World's Head of Policy and Advocacy, Anna Miller, said there had been no engagement from Public Health England or the Department of Health when her charity asked, ahead of the UK lockdown in March, what resources might be provided for non-English speakers. She said trying to highlight the blind spot had been like hitting your head against a brick wall. It's just been an abs absolute lack of communication or refusal to communicate from central government. That's meant we've had to get on and do the translations as if government doesn't exist, she said. Ensuring public health information gets to everybody should have been the most basic first thing in the government response, and everybody includes people who don't speak English. The resources produced by Doctors of the World have been downloaded about 60,000 times in the UK, including by police forces and groups providing accommodation for asylum seekers. Local authorities do provide translations of some of their own guidance, but Miss Miller said... Doctors of the world have been told by several local authorities that they can't keep up with the rapid changes of guidance, resulting in inconsistent and outdated information. The letter sent on Monday evening and seen by the BBC called for leadership from central government to maintain quality and consistency of public health messages. It added that it was Mr Hancock's statutory duty to provide translated resources. It said as lockdown measures are eased and guidance changes uh, regularly, it is not sustainable or practical to, for local authorities and civil society to meet this need. Um, what do you think of this? Um, I'm actually incredibly shocked that, you know, there's this expectation for non-English -speak, non speakers to get these translations automatically. Many countries, uh, when you go to them, don't have translations. They, they will have it in maybe their, their language and then maybe one or two other languages. They might do English, they might, for example, France might do English, and it might do another uh, country whose uh, citizens are very commonly kind of travel to that country. Um, so then you might get that kind of response. Um, same with other countries. You don't, they don't expect to be given a hundred odd different languages just because people can't speak the language. My opinion is, either learn the language or get out the country. You have no right to be here if you can't do that. The other alternative they have is, many of these people are uh, quite a bit older. Uh, you do have some of the Indian nationalities, 
along that kind of Pakistani, Bangladeshi, that kind of areas, um, or even Eastern Europeans where they haven't had the arrogance not to learn the language, but they have the benefit of, say, their um, children or their grandchildren to be able to at least translate it for them, in which case that might be the only way they kind of consistently get this out. Um, remember, as the guidance changes, it's going to be difficult to kind of constantly have to translate and imagine the amount of money that all of these companies and the government are having to spend because these people have had the arrogance not to learn English in the first place. Whatever you think, leave your comments down below. Like the video if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe.